one of the things that separates amateurs from the pros is how they show up to client meetings and present their ideas. Now, I know it can be exciting and emotional to put your heart and sweat into the work and then have it fall flat in a client meeting or amongst your peers and colleagues or seniors. The first thing you can do to elevate yourself when presenting and sharing your ideas is know your audience in advance of attending a meeting or a conversation. Is this going to be an internal meeting with your colleagues and peers? Or is it going to be with the senior leadership of your agency or company? Is this going to be a client facing? And when it is a client facing, are you presenting it to the executives, to the management or procurement? Knowing the audience who you're presenting to is very important because you want to tailor your storytelling based on the audience. You want to keep in mind, what does the person I'm presenting to care about the most? What are the messages and ideas and themes they want to hear what does their worldview look like what are they looking for so if you're presenting to a very logical and technical person you want to be less emotional and more logical and be more data and fact based typically what happens is when you're presenting to the executives and senior leadership you want to be very concise and precise and present the big picture thinking when you're presenting to management or procurement you want to be very logical fact-based and check off all the boxes now this is not a one-size-fits-all recommendation you have to be very tuned to the audience that you're going to be presenting to and make sure that you hit the mark in terms of what they care about. What are the things that they want coming out of that meeting based on what they care about? The second thing that separates amateurs from pros is they avoid surprises and big reveals. One thing that's worked really well for me over the years is always starting with one summary slide, which brings all the stakeholders in the room to a common ground. It resets why we're meeting, what are we going to be talking about and what we're going to take away from this meeting. This one slide is also great for re-emphasizing what the vision of the project that you're working on is, what the goals are, what the objectives are, what has been talked about, and also fills some of the knowledge gaps that might exist because they were not part of the conversation earlier and they don't have the full background and context. So it's always helpful, especially when you're working with a big team this one slide helps level set expectations brings different stakeholders to the same page and if there's any early objections you can weed them out and address them even before you launch into the conversation what i mean by that is you can address early on that this is a work in progress that you're working through some of these ideas and thinking or in your path of discovery, you've come to certain solutions and ideas and you wanna test and gauge them with the audience to see how they will react. So depending on what the context is, you wanna set that up early, right out of the gate in a meeting or conversation to ensure that you have a smooth and easy ride throughout. By conveying certain emotions early on into the conversation, you're lubricating people's minds to a collaborative and conversational presentation. Being present while presenting is the third thing that separates amateurs from pros when it comes to presenting and sharing ideas with stakeholders. Now, as you begin the conversation with the audience, if you are there in the room with them or on a Zoom call, you want to pay close attention to the body language and facial expressions of your audience. If you find it too difficult to present and do this at the same time, you can always have a colleague help you out and read the expressions of the people in the room and ping you in the chat. Paying attention to facial expressions, body language is very important because you want to know are people coming along with you on the journey as you are expressing certain ideas and themes. And if there are early signs of objection or people look confused, you can pause and address some of those concerns right away. You can literally pause the meeting and presentation and be like, guys, I'm just going to pause here for a minute. I just want to make sure that everybody's following along. Am I touching all the right points? Are we in alignment? Either two things could happen. One, somebody could raise their hand and be like, you know what? I'm not agreeing with this point. Or two, people can just be like, nope, we're following along and you can continue. Trust me, you don't want to be the person who's talking for 30 minutes and your client and stakeholders and people in the audience have tuned out after minute two because you did not address a very critical issue that they might have had. So it's always helpful to pause occasionally and ask the room and gauge the temperature of the audience that you're talking to. Think of it more as a conversation where one of the tools you're using to facilitate that conversation is potentially a PowerPoint. But don't let the PowerPoint itself be the presentation 
have a conversation. This fourth point drives me up the wall. This annoys and frustrates me so much. This is the one thing that separates amateurs, junior people from the absolute pros, the ninjas. Point number four, stop defending your work. Words are important. And when you say defend, that automatically puts you in the amateur and junior box. Here's why you shouldn't defend your work. Well, firstly, you're setting up the wrong dynamic. You're coming from this place of ego, being judged when somebody critiques your work, and it shows that you lack confidence. The underlying subcommunication is saying that you don't have the mental framework to handle conflict or negotiate when it comes to critique or objections. If you find yourself constantly at the receiving end of a lot of critique from the client or your colleagues and you're constantly wondering, well, how did I miss the mark this time? I would take a step back and really think about where this all started. What did that first conversation with the client look like? Were you curious enough? Did you ask the right questions? Did you find the right challenge to solve or did you jump to solution and conclusion? So that's one thing I would add is at the point of critique, pause, step back, and really think about, is this my ego? Or did I get curious enough early and really listen and pay attention to the actual challenge that needed to be solved? And finally, remember, you are not your work. The number one reason to separate yourself from your work is because as creative people, you're constantly shooting in the dark. Your role is literally to take in different data points, have multiple conversations, and try to suss out and find out what is the best possible path forward. And there are millions of ways to solve a certain problem or challenge. And maybe the one that you're working on is not necessarily the best path forward. So don't get hung up. So instead of defending your work, what should you be doing? Instead of being defensive, be offensive. Bring people into the conversation. You can say things like, I'm not married to any of these ideas. These are experiments. We're trying to find the best path forward based on the data points that we have, the conversations that we've had. So let's say despite all your efforts, you are still getting critique and people in the the meeting or in the conversation are not vibing or liking what you're presenting. Here's what you need to do. Lean in and get curious and ask, okay, what else? And then they'll say something and be like, okay, what else? As they start unpacking and giving you feedback and critique, you want to open up that faucet even more. Allow them to empty their mind in terms of all the things that are wrong with your idea. And you should allow all the stakeholders in the room to empty their mental vessels. And you can just keep saying the words, what else? What else is wrong here? What else is not working? Come from a place of humility. Be curious, lean into the feedback and pay attention to what your audience is telling you. Even if you don't agree with the feedback in the moment in time, still have empathy, pay attention, listen and keep asking what else. One thing you'll observe is as people have fully expressed their critique and feedback and they have verbalized what they're feeling, they're gonna feel much more at ease knowing that you are totally open and receptive and you're unfazed by their negative or constructive feedback. This in a way disarms them completely giving you the upper hand and advantage in the room. So remember, you're bringing the stakeholders into the conversation and your goal is not to win, but to build a relationship where people feel comfortable in expressing any kind of feedback, be it negative, constructive, or positive. So let's summarize the things you need to be doing starting today Elevate yourself in how you show up to client presentations and conversations. Number one, know your audience. Who are the people in the room and what do they care about? Avoid big surprises and reveals. Use the one page slide to reinforce the vision, the goals, and why we're talking and what we're going to take away from this conversation. Be present while presenting. Remember, even though you might be using a tool like PowerPoint to facilitate the conversation, you're still having a conversation. And don't be afraid to pause every couple of minutes to make sure that everybody is following along and if anybody has any objections, which you can address early on. And then finally, stop defending your work. Instead, get curious, lean into the critical feedback and bring people into the conversation. Instead of defensive, get offensive. And finally, don't die on the mountain of winning. Be that asshole that always has to win every conversation. Let me know in the comment section what are things that you do as part of your ritual, as your routine to help facilitate better 
conversations with the client when it comes to presenting and sharing your ideas. Thank you.